So if you picked up the 2990 WX and find the performance in some Windows applications a little threadbare, It's a thread ripper. I mean, you know, it should be a pretty, it's a pretty, pretty solid system. I've been exploring it myself. I've got a 2990 WX on loan from ASRock and it's in the ASRock Fatality motherboard. That's the motherboard that I've been testing. I've also been testing the new Agiza update. And so it turns out that the new Agiza update actually has some bugs and some fairly significant bugs. On the Linux side of things, if you use a, a new Linux kernel with the new UEFI that has the new Agiza, the system will hang, system D will hang on the platform security processor. It's something that's compiled into the kernel, um, but it doesn't initialize correctly. It's not a module, it's actually compiled in by default. So I think the patches, I think they were originally supplied by AMD and the Agiza, those were not well tested and that really should have been caught and that's created a lot of issues on the Linux side of things. But I was looking at benchmarks for performance and that's that's kind of related because that made some of the testing a little more difficult and so this is sort of coming a little late and all this kind of stuff but I noticed that you know the tech report and um, Pharonix and Anantech all did a lot of really great benchmarks with the 2990 WX and but strangely the 2990 WX regressed in some cases so I decided to try to do a deep dive and the more I dove into it like on the Pharonix side they're using a newer version of the GCC compiler on Linux and you know, a bunch of Linux stuff that we can get into on the Linux channel. But uh, one benchmark to me in particular stood out and that's Indigo. And I think all the reviewers pretty much were on the same page. They were like, this Indigo is a rendering program. It historically has not shown a bias between AMD and Intel. And for some reason, the 7980XE from Intel is significantly faster than the 2990WX. In fact, the 2990WX in a lot of cases with the Indigo benchmarks will regress meaning that it performs worse than the 16 core 2950. And so I set about trying to figure out what's going on with that, what's up with that. And so one of the tools in my arsenal for messing around with that is Process Lasso. Now Process Lasso is a program that lets you control which cores your programs run on and prevents them from moving around too much. And there are performance benefits from that. But it also helps you uncover performance anomalies on the Windows side of things. I mean, at its core, Process Lasso is not really a super sophisticated program. You can do what a lot of what Process Lasso does with a PowerShell command. The nice thing about Process Lasso is that it can run in the background and monitor your programs and change the priorities and change the, the running execution and the system power profile and a lot of other little details that is uh, you know, easy to miss. So it's a program of convenience, but you can do all that from PowerShell if you want. So you don't, you don't necessarily have to buy anything. I just found Process Lasso convenient for doing my testing. And I discovered something really interesting. With the Indigo benchmark, I can get a score of over 3.0 on the bedroom scene uh, when I'm doing the benchmarking if I tell it not to run on core zero. But if I restart the program, having told it not to run on core zero, uh, the performance is better. It'll go from like 1.6, like we saw in the tech report benchmark. So when they, when they benchmarked it, there's two scenes in Indigo. There's a bedroom scene and a race car scene. And the scenes are different, so the benchmark is different. So on a 1950X or a 2950X, you would expect them to score about two. And that's true on Linux or Windows or anywhere and uh, maybe a little bit better on Linux than Windows because we'll get to that in a minute. And um, the, the race car scene uh, is, a, is a little different. I'm getting like five or six on Windows. The race car scene doesn't really matter, but we'll use it for comparison. I mean, it, it does matter, but for my point is that the bedroom scene on Windows doing the rendering, according to Tech Report, is like 1.6. And I'm able to replicate that result. Like I totally was getting a 1.6 on there as well. In order to get rid of the 1.6, I was able to move it from 1.6 to 1.9 by doing two things. One was installing the, the ultra power profile, and the other thing was changing the process priority from below normal to normal. For some reason, the Indigo benchmark on Windows runs with below normal uh, priority, and I think that's probably because when the system is that busy, Windows trips over its own shoelaces, 
And so if you run the benchmark, it's like, oh my gosh, my computer hung. I need to hit click stop or whatever. So the people that wrote the Indigo benchmark probably just set it to be below normal so that people could actually like stop it or kill it or whatever, because it does take a little while to run that benchmark. So using the PowerShell commands and changing the processor affinity, you can use these PowerShell commands and it's a little weird when you've got 63 processors it rolls over into the negative numbers because each core on the processor is a, is a binary bit. So we have 64 bits here for keeping track of which, uh, which processor your, uh, your, your process runs on. So if you think of like the first CPU in the system as one and then the, the one bit and then the two bit, like one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 64 times, the last bit, bit number 60, the 64th bit is the negative sign. So uh, when you do negative one, your, your, your most significant bit is um, the one and everything else is zero. And so that's what I'm doing with PowerShell here to change the process affinity of the Indigo benchmark. But when I change the, the process affinity, meaning like the affinity means like the, the, the process runs on these particular CPUs. The, the process is said to have an affinity to run on like CPU, you know, 248, 16, whatever. Uh, so I, I basically turn off CPU zero. And so like CPU, like physical CPU zero is, you know, those, the first two threads or whatever, I guess. And so I've turned it off there. And all of a sudden my Indigo benchmark score is like 3.0 for the bedroom scene. So I've jumped from 1.6 to 1.9 with the power settings, and then I go from 1.9 to over three, just telling it not to run on one of my 32 cores. How crazy is that? I don't think it's just a Windows scheduler problem. So like other people have reported, oh, there's a problem with the Windows scheduler, there's some kind of a discrepancy here, blah, blah, blah. Presumably the Indigo people have compiled the program to basically not run any different between Windows and Linux. That's an assumption that I'm making that may be an incorrect assumption, but hopefully the Indigo people, the binary is basically compiled the same way with the same options between Linux and Windows. So that rules out like the whole, you know, Pharonix using the super optimized GCC version for their benchmarks. And I think the tech report is pretty obvious that they were running the Indigo benchmark on Windows because uh, I was able to replicate that 1.6 result. I don't think anybody has done anything wrong here. I just think that the rabbit hole goes deeper than most people really realize. I'm really happy with how this workstation turned out, but I'm also very surprised that a lot of the performance regressions that we're seeing on Windows may be related to some sort of internal problem on, on Windows. Um, Mark Rusinovich, like I followed Mark Rusinovich's blog, and he's a Windows internals guy. Microsoft should have hired him years ago. They finally did, and he wrote all these really cool tools like Sysmon and Process Explorer, that kind of thing. I've been using those tools to try to figure out what the heck is going on inside Windows that messing with the thread affinity while the program is running seems to improve the performance. Like when we take a core out and we don't run anything on a particular core, the utilization on that core is still really high from Windows stuff. And so using the Mark Rusinovich's tools to try to explore that, um, there are some, there's some interesting things there. So there's some interesting weight chains, but I'm not really sure that I've made any progress figuring out what's going on with the Windows internals. So the fix here is probably to send Mark Rusinovich a 2990WX workstation and see what he can come up with and see if we can get some patches. Now, just for giggles, I've rebooted the system, exact same hardware, same timing, same configuration, same everything, into Linux to do the Indigo, the Indigo benchmark side of it. And now you know why I'm complaining about the firmware issues. Oh, jeez, come on. It's like, AMD, send me the beta Agizas. I will help you test. Put it under an NDA. We can avoid these kind of like embarrassing like kernel Agiza bugs because it's driving a lot of people insane right now that want the updated Agiza and a newer kernel to fix some other bugs, but they can't run it. They have to re have to downgrade their kernel for motherboards. And even worse, motherboards like uh, Gigabyte's Oris Extreme don't have a version of the UEFI with the older Agiza. So they're stuck. And that, that Agiza, the new Agiza or the new UEFIs are buggy across the platform. I'm working with, with ASRock right now on the Fatality motherboard uh, to add some more options for SEV, uh, enabling and disabling SEV to try to address some of the PSP problems to make it so that people don't have to recompile their kernel. 
That aside, what's the performance of this system look like on Linux? 3.5 to 3.6, the best numbers that we've seen. And those numbers are right in line with Pharonix, even a little better. Like honestly, I think the, the numbers at Pharonix, uh, the, the numbers at Pharonix I initially had thought were really aggressive, but actually doing some testing and running some stuff in the system, because they were running 3200 memory, when you've got dual rank and multiple sticks of memory, the memory speed actually matters uh, quite a bit less uh, because you can parallelize across ranks and parallelize across sticks. So you can make up some of the clock speed problems just by having more memory, so that's neat. But that's a story for another time. The bottom line is that on Linux, the Indigo benchmark rendering those same scenes performs significantly better. And so you can do the side-by-side -side here with like, Here's Windows stock, here's Windows with the power thing, here's Windows with Process Lasso and PowerShell, and then here is the performance on Linux with the performance governor, but otherwise a basically stock installation of Linux. Isn't that neat? I think it's fascinating. Now obviously I've got more work to do. If you've picked up a 2990WX and you want to help test or whatever, you should definitely come to the Level 1 forums. We've got some people in the forums that also are early adopters of the 2990WX. Mostly they're Linux gurus and, and people like that, but it has been awesome chatting with the people on our forum and sort of doing <laughs> dives, because it's like we're exploring new country. It's like AMD built the hardware, but the software is not here yet. So. I don't know, it's, it is a lot of fun. Now I've also got the 2950X, I bought a 2950X from Amazon so that I could have something to play with. And the 2950X is so far living up to all of my hopes and dreams. But that's gonna be a subject for another video. Again, big thanks to ASRock for letting me borrow the 2990WX. I have done some insane, insane, grueling, overclocked torture testing in this Fractal Define R6 with the Intermax closed loop TR4 cooler and also the high-end Noctua fans. And oh boy, let me tell you, that is a sweet, sweet system. I think it needs some optimizations and I think it needs some, it needs some stuff. There's still some rough edges, but I think if we can get to the other side of these Giza issues and we can get to the other side of some of these other configuration issues, holy crap, this is a nice software development system. This is a nice uh, high-end system for doing things that you would need 32 CPU cores for. Now, of course, you can substitute the 2950X and have an equally amazing system if you, for things that don't need 32 cores, which is quite a lot of things, and it's relatively low cost. I mean, you look at the, the cost equation for the competition and how much you can get a 2950X CPU for, and the, I mean, the 2950X clock speed, especially the all-core clock speed, is it's pretty good. So it's an exciting time. Competition is alive and well. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out and you can find me in the level one forums.